So this is joint work with uh, Michael Porter. Uh, thank you to the organizers. I'm delighted to be here to share our work with you. Uh, so the topic and the motivation is how can we make allocation more resilient to economic shocks? We are going to focus on the Great Recession, but you can think of any shock that increase uncertainty in an industry or in a region. So the Great Recession in the, in the US destroyed many jobs, 5% of all the jobs in the US. However, what is important is that regions vary in resilience. So for example, Salt Lake City in Utah did very well, but Reed in California did very poorly. Also, there is variation across industry clusters. So medical devices in Salt Lake City did very well. It did really poorly in, in Madison, Wisconsin. So in this project, we're going to try to understand this variation, right? Why are some locations more resilient to shocks? And we're going to focus on employment because employment is a very important economic and performance dimension for a city and for a region. Now, there are two opposing hypotheses on how to mitigate a shock. The most predominant one is that you need industry diversification to avoid that the shock propagate and amplifies across related economic activity, <coughs> right? So this is the idea of don't put all the eggs within the same basket. And almost everyone gives you this recommendation. We're going to have a different recommendation. We're going to argue that economies of agglomeration that happen in cluster are going to help mitigate economic shocks. In particular, we're going to examine what is the role of industry clusters. We define industry clusters as industries that are related to each other and they are co-located. And we're going to look at, do clusters matter for growth during the whole business cycle, including the recession period or not? Here, there is a well-known example of an industry cluster, biopharmaceuticals in Boston, right? So, so this is the phenomenon that we're going to uh, examine in this project. And to contribute to the debate, we are going to ask three questions, right? Do we have economies of agglomeration at work when you have an economic recession? The second question, are those cluster effects going to be higher or lower during the recession versus the non-crisis period? And the third question, what are the different agglomeration channels that can help a region to mitigate economic shocks? So what's the empirical setting? We are going to look at regional industries' resilience in employment growth. And resilience is going to defi be defined as higher growth than the same industry in other locations during the recession, but also during the recovery period. We're going to exclude local industries like restaurants and retail and hospitals. Why? Because they do not agglomerate, okay? And the shock, as I mentioned before, is the Great Recession. This is going to be an economy-wide demand shock that we know that increased <laughs> uncertainty and reduced demand in many industries. And this has been proven by Bloom and outsource that indeed what happened during the Great Recession is uncertainty. When you have uncertainty, usually firms freeze investment, freeze hiring, so that's why it's so important to figure out how can we mitigate uncertainty. Um, so the question that we ask in this paper is, do clusters matter for resilience of regional industries? A theory will say yes, right? Because theory will tell us that economies of agglomeration take place across related economic activity, and you can think of Marshall, you can think of Porter. If that's the case, if clusters are going to be helping resilience, then if you're an industry, that is located within a strong cluster, you're going to grow faster during the recession and in the recovery period than the same industry in a weak cluster. And to illustrate this notion, think of an industry, for example, surgical and medical instrument, 
in one particular location, so Lake City, Utah, right? Is that because that industry is part of a strong medical device cluster where you have other industries that are complementary and are supporting this industry, we will expect that this particular focal industry is going to be more resilient to the shock. Okay, so that's the hypothesis that we are going to test. Now, <coughs> before I get into the uh, hypothesis, the, the, you know, the empirical uh, setting, the, the model, I wanted to give you a preview of the findings. And what we find is that indeed industries that are part of a strong cluster are going to uh, grow faster in terms of employment during the whole business cycle, uh, especially during the crisis. And we look at both employment growth, but also growth in the number of businesses in, in, in the regional industry. And what we thought it was very um, important as well is that multiple types of agglomeration channels are helping resilience. So for example, we look at cluster strength in terms of employment, in terms of how many businesses you have, um, based on how many suppliers, buyers, whether or not there is patenting happening in the, in the related industries, as well as the breadth of industries within the cluster. And all of them matter to help you mitigate uh, the shock. Now, in any you know, good economy geography paper, you have to have a placebo test, right? And the placebo test is that we're going to show that unrelated industries do not improve resilience. So just by having a group of industries that are not related to each other, diversity, that is not going to help mitigate a shock. Um, the other thing that we uh, do in the paper is to try to figure out a little bit more the mechanism that is driving uh, resilience. And we find that interfirm linkages are going to be particularly important to help mitigate uncertainty. Uh, the other finding is a finding that we all already knew, right? If you are a large regional industry located in a weak cluster, you're going to be the most vulnerable to the shock, right? So we know industry specialization is actually a very bad thing, but we all knew that. Now, so the hypothesis is a, it's a simple hypothesis if uh, the industry is located in a strong cluster, it's going to be more resilient to an economic uh, shock than exactly the same industry located in a weak cluster. Um, to illustrate that, let's consider the same industry, surgical and medical instrument, in two different locations. Salt so Lake City versus Madison, Wisconsin. In both cases, these two locations are highly specialized in the focal industry. Here is a, a measure of a specialization, the location quotient. Basically, if it's higher than one, it means that the industry is overrepresented in that location. You can see both of them are highly specialized in this industry. The difference right, is that in Salt Lake City, you have a strong medical device cluster. You have complementary industries, okay? In Madison, Wisconsin, you just have a little bit of employment on op optical instrument, but you have a weak cluster. Here, I do the same thing, but with numbers. This is the specialization in the related industries above one. In Madison, Wisconsin, below one, right? So now. What's the hypothesis? The hypothesis is that the industry is going to grow faster here because it has economies of agglomeration that's going to exploit, right? And here you have the numbers. The annual industry employment growth during the recession was 5% in Salt Lake City, minus 31% in Madison, Wisconsin. Even during the recovery period, the growth was much higher here in Salt Lake City than in uh, Madison, Wisconsin. So this is just an example, but we're going to estimate this for every industry, every cluster, all the uh, regions in the US. So now, you may be asking yourself, but why? Why is that happening, right? Well, one mechanism is, is simply economies of agglomeration. And I don't need to explain economies of agglomeration to this group, right? 
Marshallian, the classical Marshallian agglomerations, Impurapu linkages, a labor market pooling, access to knowledge and opportunities in a cluster. So all that may be happening also when you have a, a, an economic crisis. That are also within a cluster, you often have support institutions, some of us call it institutions for collaboration, cluster organizations, that can also help firms share the risk. So try to help the weaker firms within the cluster, all right? So all these factors can be actually taking place also during a recession. So this is one a mechanism, or many mechanisms, right? Another one that is quite new is that we actually think that inter-firm collaboration and inter-industry linkages are going to be particularly important when you have an economic crisis. And let me explain to you why. So, what do we know about an economic crisis? That you're going to have a lot of uncertainty. And the macroeconomists have shown that, all right? So you have more uncertainty. We know that when firms face more uncertainty in demand, they're better able to respond to that uncertainty by having supplier buyer collaborations rather than being vertically integrated. And that's the traditional model of Silicon Valley that Sassanian, you know, long, a long time ago, you know, explained and showed, right? It's also, here is another example. When the automakers in the US face a lot of competition from the foreign markets, the way they responded to the, to the uncertainty in demand was by becoming more vertically disintegrated, right? Now, the good news is that this type of supplier-buyer collaborations are going to be more likely to happen in a cluster. And they're going to be very important during an economic crisis. Why? Because now you can have suppliers that have many buyers, or the other way around, buyers that have many suppliers, and as a result, they can diversify the risk within the cluster. You can also have suppliers and buyers that have long-term interactions, long-term relationship. Then they, they may be able to share the risk. Why? Imagine if your supplier is cash constrained or credit constrained because of the financial crisis and you have a long-term relationship with that supplier, you may be willing to pay your supplier faster to reduce their working uh, capital costs, right? So, so that can be another mechanism that explains why clusters could be particularly important during uh, an economic uh, crisis. With any hypothesis, you only have a good hypothesis if you have a counterfactual, right? Otherwise, it's not a hypothesis, it's something obvious. And the counterfactual here is that it, the macroeconomists tell us that shocks can propagate and amplify among related industries and related firms. In particular, um, a recent paper by Asimoglu and co-authors, they find that import shocks, so think about a negative uh, trade shock, right, amplifies from the downstream industries to the upstream industries, basically from the suppliers to the buyers. And because of that, negative import shocks from China employment growth in the U.S. has declined significantly, right? So, so they show that in the paper. However, this is the main difference with our paper. In these macro papers of shock propagation, they're all focusing on national industries. We are focusing on regional industries, meaning that we actually are going to allow for economies of agglomeration. These macro papers do not even consider economies of agglomeration because their unit of analysis is the national industry, is never the regional industry, okay? Now, the data, you'll be happy to know this is public data, is the US cluster mapping project a portal that we created with the help of the US government. Uh, it's a, everyone can use it, firms, practitioners, researchers, um, for the paper, we are going to look at uh, the last business cycle. Very important, our regional units are going to be economic areas, 
rather than MSAs. Uh, and why is that? Because the, you know, when you think of a cluster, a cluster also is going to have manufacturing, and manufacturing very often is going to be outside the MSA. So, so the economic area is a better market unit for us. We look at traded industries, and we're going, those traded industries are going to be grouped in 51 clusters. How do we, only five minutes, my goodness. Uh, so we have a whole paper on how we define clusters, okay? Think about objects that are very related to each other. Once you have a cluster definition, you can map it across all the locations in the US to figure out which regions are highly specialized in a particular cluster. Here you have medical devices, no surprise that Boston or San Francisco or San Diego or even Portland, Oregon are highly specialized in, in medical devices. These are our 51 clusters. Here I'm showing you the cluster composition of Boston. So in color you have the clusters that are very strong in Boston. You wouldn't be surprised, medical devices, biopharma, IT, but you can see almost some super clusters here and here as well. Sorry. So the idea is that can regions use their comparative advantage in order to mitigate economic shocks, in order to reduce uncertainty. So, that, so, so that's the idea behind the, the paper. I won't show you the econometric model because we won't have much time. Instead, I'm going to show you the findings uh, with two graphs, right? So the dependent variable here is regional industry employment growth. Here is the size of the regional industry. The negative coefficient is just a convergence effect. If you are a regional industry that is very big, you're going to grow more slowly. Now, what is important, that convergence effect was greater during the financial crisis. Here is the effect of the cluster, okay? It's always positive during the whole business cycle, and in particular, during the financial crisis. And here, you have the same numbers in a figure, right? The cluster effect is positive and significant, and particularly important during the financial crisis, all right? Here I have the placebo. Now I'm grouping industries randomly and doing a bootstrap analysis, and you can see if you just group industries randomly, they are not related through input-output technology, you have no effect <coughs> at all, okay? So industries that are unrelated do not help you mitigate shocks. Now, how will, um, something that we do in the paper is to try to figure out this inter-firm linkage mechanism. To do that, we identify industries where these inter-firm linkages are going to be more important. We call those industries supply chain industries versus business to consumer industries. This is part of another paper on the supply chain economy with Karen Mills. Basically, what we find is that both type of industries are going to benefit from the cluster effect. Both of them benefit more during the Great Recession, but you can see in blue are the supply chain industries, those industries where these inter-firm linkages are going to be more important, are benefiting the most of being located in a strong cluster during the whole business cycle, and in particular, during uh, the financial crisis. Uh, so I will conclude, right, thinking about if I have to give some recommendation for, to, to government, to practitioners, about what should be my regional strategy to, be, to better able be better able to respond to economic shocks. I will tell them, invest in your comparative advantage, right? Why? So, well, why are clusters important? Because when you have a shock, industries are able to pool resources among each other because they are related to each other. In the cluster, you have many firms that are going to be uh, competing, but they're going to be competing in related markets, not necessarily head-to-head -head competition. You're also going to have more likely collaboration between proximate firms that is going to help you, uh, you know, share the risk, diversify the risk. And I think the key about this paper is these cluster benefits are going to be especially important if you're facing uncertainty. You know, when things are going wrong, being in a cluster could be especially good. Uh, so then, what's the recommendation? 
regions should try to improve the breadth of their emerging and established clusters. So the recommendation is to specialize in a set, in a group of related industries. Do not specialize in one industry. Do not do simply industry diversity, because industry diversity is wasting resources, and you cannot pool resources when that is a negative shock. All right? I think with that, I will conclude uh, so that I, I allow you to react to the presentation. Thank you. That was perfect timing, actually. <laughs> Some questions. Uh, I found it very attractive. Um, one of my concerns is comparison of uh, Boston and Madison um, as to whether, or at least the Salt Lake City and Madison, as to whether those are kind of uh, picking endpoints that you then come back and explain. Oh. A and so I'm curious is if I was to look at Boston equivalent or central New Jersey, which also has a huge bio, or uh, San Diego, would the results be the same? That's so, all I'm curious. Very good question. So indeed, because what we are doing, so I showed you an example, but we estimate this, right? Looking at all the industries, all the locations in the US, all the cluster, and then in that estimation, we do find that, that indeed the cluster, if, if you're an industry located in a strong cluster, you're going to grow relatively faster than the same industry in a weak cluster. And you, know, you estimate the model. I show you just an example. Of course, we chose an example. It was very important that the two locations were very specialized in the particular industry, the medical instruments. But the only difference between the two is that one has complementary economic activity that's going to be help, helpful, the other doesn't. And there are many, many other uh, you know, examples. OK, Peter, as you have the mic, do you want to? Well, thank you very much, uh, Mercedes, for a very interesting presentation. Um, I have a question on the nature of uh, inter-firm linkages, because that's also your final message, specialization instead of related industries. Yeah. But at the same time, you talk about high uncertainty. And I think it's not entirely clear to me how the type of inter-firm linkages is related to high uncertainty. And I would like to give you one example from what is often called a community of practice. Mm -hmm. This means essentially to, in order to reduce uncertainty, you have to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. And I didn't hear anything on the type of uh, relationships between the different firms, whether they are specializing or not. I give you one example from our own research on, on uh, aviation clusters in Europe. One of the most important success factors was not the question how they were related, the main, since they were not directly competitors. The main thing what they did is information exchange. Talk, all the managers talking to each other, see how they could survive under very uncertain and some recession conditions. So I was wondering whether you have looked also into the, the more personal communicative uh, dimensions of success of clusters? So, a fantastic question. That's going to be the next paper. But, <laughs> but, let me, but I'm, going to dive, I, I'm going to dive a little bit into that, right? Uh, so we know that inter-firm collaboration yeah. happen in cluster because you have so many firms, right? Now, what is important here, as you said, is that we knew it was important when you're growing. Now what I think is a, is, is a very new result is that it's especially important when you have a negative shock. Now, why is that? Uh, and that will be the sort of the next paper. So part of it, as you said, is that if I have a long-term relationship with a firm, maybe between a supplier and a buyer, when things are going bad, I want to help my weak partner. Because you know we have this long-term interaction. We're innovating together. Right? Uh, and I don't want to lose them because, we ha because it's credit constraint. And I, I think we have examples of that in the automotive industry. Toyota has been very good in establishing relational contracts with their suppliers so that when things are going bad, they all know how to respond and continue innovating. General Motors in the US hasn't been good at all in, in establishing these relational contracts with their suppliers. So, so trying to figure out those specific firm mechanisms, I think it will be a very uh, important area of research. Thank you. <laughs>
Thanks. Uh, thanks, indeed, very interesting uh, um, set of findings and analysis, but you went very quickly through the, the model and the presentation. I, I, so I, I, yes, sorry uh, about that. Can I ask you that? Uh, so basically, what you call related uh, industries, very much kind of complementary industries, but you don't look at the upstream, downstream. Uh, I, we do. You do? Because okay, I, because I was not there. So wh what I want to get is that, you know, a cluster is also like, you know, this kind of resilience would also be related to what you do with your suppliers and your, and your uh, clients, so to speak. Um, and the example that you gave for the surgical equipment, it was all different surgical equipment uh, things, but they could be importing whatever the materials and stuff. And, and there was no, for example, university research or whatever that would support also uh, the sector. So one question is that, and if I can uh, plug in another thing, the conclusion that diversity is wasteful diversification uh, would be in a way more powerful if in the regression results you could also show that it's not statistically significant. So in a way the model uh, sort of pushes that away and and it's not the most straightforward specification that I would imagine. Right. In, in so, so two things. You, you are right that, for example, in the model, we haven't controlled for the related clusters. You could think that medical devices is related to knowledge creation, right? Even to biopharmaceutical. So, which is actually, if anything, is going to show you that the related clusters is also going to be important, but it's no model right now in the current specification. Great question. Your other question was about the industry diversity versus clusters. Well, we have a, a, a region fixed effect, which is controlling for the size, right, of, of the region. We also are doing the placebo effect that shows you that if you just group industries randomly, there is no effect. But I think we can do even better by even actually including some form of industry diversity variable in the specification. Um. Oh, sorry. Okay, okay thanks. Uh, so, uh, two questions. One is, do you see the difference between uh, different, different types of clusters? So, is there the resilience of uh, uh, automobile clusters is the same or different from medical instruments. So that's one. The other thing is the general conclusion on policy level. General conclusion seems to be, you know, policies supporting, uh, cultivating, nurturing clusters is good for resilience. Uh, but for the purpose of resilience, is there anything you need to do differently or is it just doing Good clusters is, is good for resilience also. <laughs> you know, very good uh, question. So within a cluster, you have many agglomeration channels, right? It could be that we have to facilitate labor flows. So I'm telling you clusters are going to be good, but you want a great question is what channel is going to be more important? Is it about facilitating that I have suppliers and they are collaborating with the buyers? Is it maybe about having policies that allow labor flows more efficiently among the related industries? Is it about supporting finance, you know, when you have this credit constraint? So we, we don't, you know, all of them I think are important, but we should be try to separate, right, to figure out which one of them is more important. Um, your other question was about, so one is about the mechanism, yes? Oh, clusters, right. And we do, uh, the, the paper is available on, on my website, and we do there some analysis by cluster, right? What I was surprised is that indeed the automotive cluster was resilient as well, right? But here is why, I mean, I don't, the reason I don't emphasize that is that we know the government put a lot of money there, right? They rescue the big automakers. So can I attribute that to, to the clusters versus this, uh, you know, help from the federal government? But we did analysis across different uh, type of clusters, the 51, and what is very important is that the same patterns hold. Is that the positive effect during the business cycle, especially when you have more uncertainty during the recession? But I think that's a great question. Should, I, should it be more in medical devices than uh, auto? Hello. Okay. Well, do you the, have any? Do you have any? Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Oh, well, you can. Article. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, 
Okay, Peter also mentioned about uh, the interaction between uh, firms within the industries. And you mentioned uh, about uh, diversification regarding the industries and uh, versus uh, penetration approach of industries. If you talk about diversification, it's related to a higher risk than the, than the other industries, right? And, and if we talk about uh, the crisis or shock, how does trust within the cluster based on the network is included in this research if I look at your regression, uh, regression model? Because it's uh, the, uh, the uh, M, M, uh, what was it? job creation, employment, yes. Yes. right? To explain during the, uh, the shock and the specialization with the diversification uh, strategies. Yes. That's one thing. And then you said, weak and strong clusters. What is the criteria, if you are using in your presentation, complementary versus uh, the, the, uh, the industries that are providing substitutes, uh, services or goods? So how do you measure weak and good clusters that by presenting only the complementary industries? Just one thing. And I think... Just two questions? Yeah. <laughs> Because you said at the end, we, we, be. We're yeah. 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 So yeah. yeah. That, that was the question. Because at the end, he said, being in the class is best. Is best in in crisis. How do you explain that? Thank you. That's a good question. Right. So, so, so very uh, quick answer. You know, indeed, we think institutions for collaboration within clusters uh, can be very important when you are facing a negative shock. For example, if I think of biopharma in Boston, MassBio is a well-known institution for collaboration, more than 30 years old, that probably play a role in helping the small businesses during the uh, Great Recession. Now, in our model, it's very hard to, we cannot separate what is trust and institutions for collaboration versus you know, input-output linkages or uh, knowledge linkages or the fact that many in these related industries are sharing similar labor occupations. But it's a great question. To test that, ideally, I will need to map all the institutions for collaboration that exist in the US. And we're trying to do that in the US cluster mapping project, try to map any organization that facilitate that firms connect with each other, that suppliers connect with buyers, but it's a, it's a data set that we haven't developed yet and will allow to, to answer that very important question that you asked. What is weak versus strong? We explain that in detail in the paper, but also we have another paper where we, we, uh, we develop a whole methodology and algorithm to define clusters. So what is biopharma versus what is medical devices versus what is uh, information technology. And it's a whole different paper, so I, you know, but I'm happy to share that. Some more questions in the audience. So I think, Mercedes, you're going to have to work quite hard during the coffee break, actually, to respond to the I'd rest of them. Delighted. But now Thank we you. do need to invite Kingsley to, um, to join us.